Good evening and thank you for joining us. Election Day is now less than 90 hours away and tonight every second counts as the candidates and their campaigns race across the country fighting over votes in the battleground states that will ultimately decide who wins the White House. Tonight President Trump and Joe Biden are stumping in Minnesota and Wisconsin part of a day long swing through the Midwestern states at the center of their campaign strategies. But as we come on the air those states are also at the epicenter of the coronavirus crisis. Tonight the U.S. has now shattered yet another record for new infections. Nearly 90,000 cases reported on Thursday alone. One of the president's top health advisors told governors today that one in every three counties in the U.S. is now considered a coronavirus hotspot. Dr. Deborah Burks urged them to require masks in their states and to limit large gatherings. The president isn't heeding either of those pleas, holding large rallies today and even making fun of an ally for her use of not wearing or wearing, I should say, a mask. His rival Joe Biden is holding smaller drive-in events as he continues to hammer away at the president's handling of the virus. And tonight, with more than 83 million ballots already cast, next Tuesday's election is shaping up to be one of the biggest in modern history. There's a lot of new reporting to get to tonight, and our team of correspondents is standing by to cover it all. CBS's Paula Reed is going to lead us off tonight, traveling with the president in Minnesota. Good evening, Nora. The president has just arrived at his event here in Minnesota. After holding two large rallies earlier today, he's limited to just 250 people at this event to prevent the further spread of the virus. The president has been barnstorming across the upper Midwest today ahead of Tuesday's vote, and he's really focusing on people who have pandemic fatigue. Hello, Michigan. With COVID raging in every swing state he hit today, the president tried to convince the crowd otherwise. It's a pandemic and you're doing good. But in Michigan, a state he carried in 2016 and now trails former Vice President Joe Biden by eight points, COVID hospitalizations are up 96% since October 1st. It's always cases are up and people go crazy, you know. Now it's uh, you live with it. And you have, uh, and you know what to do. We understand it now. You got to understand it. But we're making that beautiful turn. The president even mocked Fox News host Laura Ingram for wearing a mask recommended by top health officials, especially in crowds. Is that a mask? No way. Are you wearing a mask? I've never seen her in a mask. Look at you. Oh, she's being very politically correct. Whoa. Mr. Trump also falsely claimed doctors are profiting off of COVID deaths. You know, our doctors get more money if somebody dies from COVID. That's true. It's like $2,000 more, so you get more money. The president's rally in Green Bay was under fire before it even started, as the local hospital system warned it was a bad idea, given the city has one of the highest infection rates in the country. The truth is we have done an incredible job. As the president tries to play down concerns about the virus, CBS News has learned CDC data shows cases are surging in 49 states. Coronavirus Task Force member Dr. Deborah Burks told governors today. We're seeing now um, surge across the northern part of the United States. We now have about 1,200 counties, almost a third of the country, in our hotspot category. In Minnesota, the president blasted the Democratic governor after he was forced to limit his rally to just 250 people. With COVID outbreaks tied to two previous rallies he held in the state, the president was asked if it was risky to do it again. No, I don't at all, no. And they're outdoor rallies. They're all outdoor. There are new questions about whether the president will get to hold a rally on election night. Washington, D.C.'s COVID safety rules may prevent him from holding the event he had hoped to have at his D.C. hotel. He says instead he may just stay at the White House as he waits to learn if he'll be able to stay there another four years. Nora. Paula Reed, thank you.